Welcome once again to explainingcomputers.com and to my second video about spreadsheet skills. Last time we looked at the basics and therefore this time we can get down to the nitty gritty of absolute and relative cell addresses. Right, here we are once again in a spreadsheet. As in my last tutorial I'm using OpenOffice Calc but you can do what I'm doing here in any spreadsheet you like, Excel, OpenOffice, Calc, LibreOffice, etc. Now, to explain the difference between an absolute and a relative cell address, I've entered a bit of information into this spreadsheet, which is going to be about calculating the earnings for particular employees. So I've made up some names of some employees here, I've put in some hours they might have actually worked in a particular week, and I've put in a column for earnings, and I've put in a text label saying hourly wage, and over here in G4, I've put in their hourly wage itself, which is 765, and I've formatted that to be currency. We covered all this basic stuff in the last tutorial. If you haven't looked at that, you don't know how I got to here, look back to that tutorial. Anyway, to work out what, for example, Jane Brookstairs would have earned in this week, we need to multiply what's in C6 by what's in G4. In other words, her hours worked in the week by the hourly wage. So to do that, we could go to cell D6, as we did last time, press equals to start a formula, click on cell C6, multiply, and click on cell G4, press enter, and it would work. So far, so good. What's the issue, you cry? Well, let's try and copy what we've got here down the rest of the column. Easiest way to do this is to grab the corner where our cursor changes from the arrow to the cross, and drag down, and oh, it hasn't worked. Why hasn't it worked? Well, if we look in cell D6, click on there, you can see it shows us C6 times G4, which is what we want, that cell times that cell. But if I press escape and click on the cell below, it's trying to multiply there C7 times G5. And if we look below again, it's trying to multiply C8 times G6. So what is happening each time the spreadsheet is moving on the cell address to try and anticipate what we want it to do? But unfortunately here, we only want it to move one of the addresses. We want the actual hours figure to change as it works down this column, but we want the hourly wage figure it uses to remain the same in G4. And that's why we have to have in spreadsheets sometimes the use of absolute and relative cell addresses. Relative cell addresses are the ones that change as they go down when we copy, absolute cell addresses stay fixed. So to make this work, we'll get rid of the things that don't work. Always a good idea. In fact, we'll get rid of what's in there as well. And we'll do it again, and we'll enter equals, and again, click on C6. But now we'll press multiply and click on G4, but we'll make that into a absolute cell address. So C6 is a relative address, so is G4 at the moment. I'm going to enter a dollar sign before the G and before the 4, that will turn it into a fixed cell address. And if I press enter on that, the result's exactly the same. But if I now go to that cell and drag down to copy it down the row, you will see that it works. Because in this cell we've got C6 times G4, escape out again, cell below we've got C7 times G4, cell below C8 times G4, etc. And that's the basis of absolute and relative cell addresses. Now, if you're thinking, do you have to enter that dollar sign yourself? You don't have to. I'll get rid of all this again. We could do this by going to the cell and type equals, press C6, multiply, and go to G4. And then the spreadsheet can put in the dollar signs for you. Now, how it does this depends on which spreadsheet you're in. If you're working in Excel, here you need to press F4. If you're working in OpenOffice Calc or LibreOffice Calc, you need to press Shift F4. So here I'm going to press Shift F4, and you'll see it puts in the dollar signs around that particular cell address. Once again, I can enter it. Once again, I'll pull it down there. And just to finish things off, we'll put in the total as well, equal sum, as we saw in the last video, open a bracket, put a range in, close bracket, and there we are, we've finished off this little spreadsheet. And we can prove it works, let's change the hourly wage, let's pay them more, let's pay them, I don't know, let's pay them 
£10.25 an hour, and look, it'll all change. Everything works. So there, hopefully, you've got the basis of absolute and relative cell addresses. Right, to add another level of complexity and to check you really understand what was going on in the last example, I'm going to explain how you can have not just absolute and relative cell addresses, but mixed cell addresses. And to do that, I'm going to build up a table square. So what I've entered here is the numbers 1 to 10 across the top of our columns, numbers 1 to 10 down the rows here, and I want to multiply to fill in all the values. So for example, 6 times 7 in that cell should be 42. Now to do that, I can actually make that happen in just one copy, because into cell B2, I've entered a mixed cell address, or two mixed cell addresses multiplied together. I'll show you what it does first, and we'll see how it works. So I could go to that cell and simply go edit and copy, and then highlight the whole table, edit and paste, and we'd have a working table square, and indeed 7 times 6 does indeed equal 42. So how does that work? Let's get rid of all these numbers and then show you building it up again. So I'll get rid of those, I'll get rid of those, and I'll get rid of those. I've got rid of the numbers across the top and down the edge just to show you that you can build up series in a spreadsheet really quickly. So if I go up here and I actually highlight the range of those first two values, 1 and 2, if I drag the corner there, it will complete the series, put all the other values in. Similarly, I can repeat that down the edge, two values in a series, drag down, it will complete it for you, which just saves a bit of time. Anyway, back to our mixed cell addresses. If I go to cell B2, what I want to do here is to clearly multiply, in this case, A2 times B1. So if I enter equals to pick up a formula, and then I'll click on A2. Now, I want A2 to be a mixed cell address. I want to lock the column here, but not the row. Now, to do that, I can use the uh, Shift F4 key again, or the F4 key if you're in Excel. So I'll press Shift F4 once, and it'll put in the normal dollars. It'll lock both the row and the column. But if I press Shift F4 again, it'll cycle through. Here it'll lock the, uh, not the column, but the row. If I press again, it'll do the opposite. If I press again, it takes you back to a fully relative cell address. So here I want a couple of clicks, one more than that. There we are. So we've got to $A2. We've locked the column and not the row. I can then multiply by B1 and do the opposite. So Shift F4, Shift F4 again for me there, and enter that and we have our formula. All I've then got to do, I'll do it by the right-click menu this time, I can do a copy, and then highlight the whole table, do our paste, and there it is, this has worked. So there you are, that hopefully shows the power of using absolute, relative, and mixed cell addresses in a spreadsheet. For many years, I taught spreadsheet skills at the University of Nottingham. And there's no doubt that one of the two things that people found the most difficult to get to grips with was uh, absolute and relative cell addresses. The other was then logic functions, which just happens to be the subject of my next spreadsheet video. But now that's it for this time, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.